Hello, hello, hello. And welcome to tutorial number, I don't remember which one, um, 31 maybe, uh, where we're going to look into a plugin that's called Monolith. And um, you can just get it from Food for Rhino. Um, the reason why we're going to look into this plugin for, for, for Grasshopper, and also, by the way, it's also a standalone program, is that it's a very, very strong um, tool or set of tools which doesn't have any proper documentation left, right? So there are no example files and so on. But when it comes down to um, voxel-based geometry creation, this plugin is excellent. So we're going to look into it. And I believe uh, I will make this into two-part series because it's a pretty large one and I really want to kind of have at least a few videos out there um, locking down this plugin in, on, on YouTube so that people uh, who are interested can kind of get that information and then will know how to use it, right? So for this tutorial, and this is going to be pro a pretty small one, I'm going to look into um, voxel geometries in general and how to um, how to generate, um, let's say, a voxel geometry from a stack of images, right? So first things first is what's a voxel, right? So in 2D, you have a pixel, which is, you know, let me just, there we go. In 2D, you have a pixel, right? In 3D, you have a voxel. Right, so it's the same thing as a pixel, only that it has a third dimension, which is Z or W, uh, U, V, W, yeah, uh, or, or W, right? So here it would be like that. So pixel versus voxel, right? Just like pixels can, they don't just have um, a size and location where where they are located, right? So so every pixel has a has two numbers attached to it, right? Let me write down. Hello, text. No, yes, okay. Um, so they have two numbers attached to them, x and y, right? Like that. Um, and let's scale it down a bit and turn off the grid snap, X and Y, right? Because they're, they, they live in 2D world. Voxels have three numbers attached to them, X, Y, and Z, right? So those are their coordinates. Cool, you know, Minecraft stuff, um, not, nothing too fancy, um, and, and really simple to follow. Now, the, the, the cool part begins when we start thinking about what kind of information can these pixels and voxels carry, right? So, for instance, let's go with something very simple. And by the way, we, we talk about these X, Y, and Z as um, dimensions, right? So this is a two-dimensional object, X, Y. This is a three-dimensional object, X, Y, Z, right? So... You can say that a pixel can also have color, X, Y, Z, color, right? Sure. And the voxel can have a color as well. You know, one can be red, the other can be blue, whatever. So that means we just added one more dimension to our um, to both our pixel and our voxel, right? And for, for this example, I will delete the pixel because we are focusing on the voxels. You'll, you'll get the idea, right? Um, so now our voxel is a four-dimensional four object, so to say. What if we make it five-dimensional, right? So it doesn't just have color, it has also density, right? Or it has elasticity. So some of, uh, some of these voxels are elastic and some of them are rigid, are stiff. Which means that every voxel, every this imaginary partition of space or a cube, right, can have a certain 
um, certain amount of dimensions and you're not limited to how many dimensions, right? That's what makes this, uh, the voxel-based uh, mod modeling, very, very interesting because you can print out 3D print out objects that have multiple multiple materials interweaved inside of the object and you can design through that right you sorry you can design for that enough explanation let's do something cool right so for instance this is going to be a little bit um a little bit awkward i guess mm, okay let, let's do it this way so i have a I have downloaded a CT scan set of images, and you can get those from from the internet. You know, you just Google for CT scan uh, images, and you'll you'll uh, you'll find this. And this is basically just uh, you know a, a, a set of images of a torso, I believe, right? So if I go through these, you can see you know a regular. Uh, computer tomography, to topography, tomography, CT, <laughs> um, CT scan, right? All right. So this is like a, a, a set of images, and all of these images are made out of pixels, right? So can we build a 3D model just from these images? And the answer is yes, because if you have uh, one by one, if you have a pixel, and let's say you have an image that is uh, four pixels, right? One, two, three, four. So this is one image, right? Made out of two by two pixels. And then on top of it, you put another image, right? That is also four pixels. And then on top of it, you put another image that is also uh, four pixels, right? And you take all of these and let's say you, you extrude them up by the amount, um, how big of a gap there is between these, these pixels. So if I extrude the curve up by one, I just have a set of voxels. And let's say, let's say um, this pixel was white, this pixel was white, and this pixel was white. Right, so we, we had that color information on these pixels. That means when we extrude them, these voxels will be white, right? Okay, so if you stack images, two-dimensional images, in, three, in, in the third dimension, they become a three-dimensional voxel grid or object. All right, so we have that done. Uh, now it's time to actually build it. Wait, my phone is going crazy, just a second. Okay, we're back. So, um, building, building, building the, the, the grid, uh, the three-dimensional array. So, in Millipede, there's this tool that's called um, Construct Bitmap Stack Source, right? So, when, we, when I took those two by two pixels, like imaginary pixels that we had, and I kind of stacked them on top of each other, this does exactly that, right? So, it takes your... Um, a set of images that you downloaded or have and it stacks them on top of each other for that it needs a directory right so so you need to specify where where those images are and i found out that that it's not a folder that you give it here but actually a first image of the set right so directory i'll go to parameters input that is not that primitive. Yes, primitive file path. File path, right click on it, set uh, one existing file because I only need to show uh, to give it the first image and it's going to read all of the uh, remaining images in that particular folder. So select one existing file, I'll set the first image, hit open, connect it to directory, wait uh, a few seconds and now it's done right so now it has this kind of source right so it has that image stack that is not enough <clears throat> because here we just have um, 
you know, a, a, a set of images. We need more information. So under Millipede, under Construct, I'll choose to construct base voxels, right? So we need a set of these empty voxels, which we will populate with the pixels from our images, right? So construct base voxels. There we go. Uh, it asks me, asks me for a box. Uh, so I will just, sure. Uh, I guess let's do a domain box, domain box <clears throat> like that. That's done. Okay. 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 And uh, I will give the box size of I don't know, a hundred by a hundred by a hundred. Sure, that's fine. This one is you know whatever. So now we have a domain box. And it's actually, you know, it just looks like a like a box. How do I show it to you? Is there like a get voxel points? Sure. Just show me the points, right? So that box by by this tool is populated with voxels, right? And here I'm just getting the uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just getting the points of those voxels to show show them to you, right? And I believe by default the resolution is set to 48 by 48 by 48, right? So that's amount of divisions. And if I grab a calculator, uh, that's actually a lot of voxels. 48 by 48 by 48. 110,000 voxels, right? Um, and it's pretty fast. Okay, so... Resolution-wise, uh, let's do um, a slider between, uh, let's say, what's half of 48, 24, until 96, yeah, until 96. Just so that we can control the resolution better. And then we have here, we have uh, three more inputs, which first one is channels, right? So uh, base channel types, shape only, shape and material, shape red, green, blue. Yeah, we don't care. Um, and by default, it's set to be shape and material ratio. Yeah, sure, whatever. We, we can also go for um, shape only, so channel um, channel type one, um, that, that, that one is whatever. That's basically, remember when I talked about colors and elasticity and so on, so this is where you can specify um, um, base channel types. Um, okay, and then we have additional channels. Uh, would we like to add, you know, like flavor, <laughs> for instance, or smell? Uh, channel that corresponds to smell. Uh, nah, we don't care uh, for, for this particular tutorial about it. And then fill. Fill value to be assigned to each voxel in every channel. Oh, I forgot to mention. So every, um, op not option, a characteristic of a voxel, such as uh, elasticity, density, and so on, is uh, described by a number that is between zero and one, right? Zero meaning no, one meaning yes, and 0 0.5 meaning kinda, you know. So is it elastic, 0 0.5, kinda. Um, so it's, it's kinda like percentage, right? Uh, so when we say that before we add uh, information to this, M, uh, to this voxel grid, if we say that fill is set to zero, for all channels, that means that everything is empty, you know, so we just have those voxels and they're completely empty. And uh, yeah, sure, I, I, I want to do that. Okay, so now we have a bunch of empty voxels, 24 by 24 by 24, that's... I don't... I don't know, uh, that's a big number. <laughs> I can't math. So we have a bunch of voxels, we have a source, right? We need to put information from the source into these voxels. How do we do that? And also, do we have anything here? No, okay. So to add information, there's a tool 
That's called ad sources, right? Ad sources. There's this um, b before you know once once we put the tool into Grasshopper Canvas, only voxels input is set. So if I plug in the voxels input here, then it asks me for a shape source, right? And then I will plug in this bitmap stack to my shape source, right? And then it's going to give me an output of voxels. Okay, so how does this work, right? Uh, we have, where's our images? Should I open Photoshop for this? Or maybe we can just zoom in like crazy. Can I zoom in more here? No, I can't. Uh, uh, mm, uh, mm, mm. Sure, let's, let's open Photoshop because I need to explain. Uh, basically, every image that is stacked in three dimensions, you know, to, to make this kind of a box, every image is... Uh, um, Let's, let's create a new one. J just a second, I can't do two things at once. Um, put it in here. There we go. And now zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Okay, so every image is made out of these pixels. And let's find the higher contrast area. Made out of these pixels, right? Once you stack them in three dimensions, those pixels become voxels, right? When those pixels become voxels, every pixel um, receives a number, right? Or every voxel receives a number according to how bright the pixel is, right? So let's say I take, um, uh, where's, where's my rhino? Let's say I take a set of images, right? So that's image one, and then that's image two, and that's image three. And then somewhere here, I have a white pixel, right, on, on my image. And let's say all of them are, um, everything else is black. And it's just this one pixel that is white. Um, so that pixel, since these images are stacked, is kind of registered as a, as a voxel, right? It's three-dimensional. And it's going to, uh, to be specifically specified that it's white, meaning its brightness is full, meaning this particular voxel is going to have number one associated with it, with it, right? While all surrounding voxels, since they're black, will have zero associated with them. So coming back here to, to our um, zoomed-in Photoshop file, all of these voxels, uh, pixels, voxels here, are going to be zero. All of these are going to be white, or going to be one. And all of these are going to be somewhere in between zero and one, right? And this is very important. Right? Okay, so we have that done. Oh, well, not done, it's just, you know, how it works. Um, coming back to Rhino, and let's just delete this ugly, ugly example. Um, when we have a bunch of empty voxels, and we add the source to them, those voxels receive a number, right? And that number is described by the brightness of every pixel in every image, in an image stack, right? In, in these slices through, through human body, which, which, which I've, I've shown here. Right? I can't scroll through them for some reason. Okay, so now these voxels were empty, these voxels are not, these voxels contain information. Which means I can create a mesh from them. So if I go to outputs, get ISO mesh, right? And I plug in voxels to voxels input here, and I plug in... Uh, Channel, the channel from which to extract the ISO contour mesh. Okay, so here we have only one channel and it's shape only, right? So if, uh, how to get a channel for this input? Well, I go to outputs and I choose get channel names, right? Get channel names, I plug in voxels here and I just get the one channel. If I, for some reason, um, 
let, let's keep this as default, right? So I will delete the base channel type one, I will delete it. And now I have two outputs here, shape and material ratio, right? No, we don't care about material ratio for now, but uh, I will be showing you how to, how to work with it. So we have two, two uh, channels, shape and material ratio. And I'll just connect the shape um, channel from here to channel here, because we, we care about seeing the shape, not the material ratio right now. That's the same thing. By the way, the channels are, I know I'm repeating myself, but the channels are for instance, color, elasticity, of, you know, of, of, of the voxel, the density of the voxel, whatever information you want to push through these voxels, you can through channels. So these are like dimensions for the voxels. Okay, and then we have ISO value. So this is always between zero and one, you know, uh, unless you're doing something funky but usually it's between zero and one. So I'll just create a slider 0 0.5, 0, 0, 0, you know, with a lot of um, zeros after 0 0.5. I'll connect it to ISO value, and that's what we get, right? A, a bunch of nonsense. Um, and it's actually, actually not a bunch of nonsense, because if I zoom out, you can kind of see a section, a portion of a torso emerge, right? So now let me go to mesh here and create a custom preview for it. For now, let's just deal with custom preview. Swatch. Uh, let's go for, oh, that's an ugly color. Blue. Let's just go gray. Okay, that's good. So that's a custom preview, right? If you see something like this, that means your resolution is way too low. Uh, just, that's just as simple as that. So resolution is set to 24. What happens when we do 48? It's better, right? We do get a, a little bit of shit there, but that's fine. 48, uh, 96. And here you can actually really well see the, the voxels, right? So that's with resolution 96. Okay, and that's uh, part of a torso and something is going on here. I don't know what, but we don't care. Um, let's do 100, uh, I don't know the map. Or actually the, the resolution doesn't matter that much. Uh, 256, 128. No, no one two six. No one two eight. Resolution. Okay, so that looks like that. Almost there. One five six maybe. I know. I'm. 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 I'm just like I keep increasing the resolution. That's that's all I'm doing. Okay, I, I believe this is good enough. You know, good enough in the. Uh, resolution for, for our future endeavors, so to say. And this is what we have, uh, what we have so far. Crazy, huh? This is from a set of images, but that's not the coolest part. The coolest part is when I start messing around with ISO value, because this is, the CT scans, the way they work, the less lesser density um, a material has when you do a CT scan, the darker it gets, right? So air is of course completely black, but um, the fat is um, dark gray, bone, and bone is almost pure white. And that is very interesting because that means that voxels, which have higher density, right, the higher brightness, Will, will, will have a higher number, which means that if I increase the ISO value through which I construct the mesh, right now it's very low. If I set it to zero, by the way, it's just going to make a box for me, so that doesn't work. But uh, if I keep increasing, we will start stripping down the skin, the fat, to muscle tissue, uh, we, we'll, we'll start seeing the muscle tissue, right? So this is the muscle tissue. 
And then we can go further. It's a little bit laggy with, with that high. And then we can start seeing the backbone, the rib cage. No, wait, that's not the rib cage. Uh, so so the, 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 the backbone, is this the spleen or whatever? I don't... Okay, I, I shouldn't make a fool of myself. I don't know the names. So let's say isovalue of 0 0.7. What does that give us? So that's um, blood... Uh, veins. Veins. Uh, not veins. Arteries. Uh, so that's the arteries, I believe. Aorta, perhaps. And uh, kidneys. I'm... I'm perhaps kidneys and so on. So you, you, you do have all of that information just from a set of images. 0 0.8. Even better, 0 0.95. Even better, 0 0.9. Uh, sorry, 0 0.99. So we end up with this. Oh, it's upside down. <laughs> okay, I got it. It is, um, yep. <laughs> so th those are the <laughs> Okay, so, so our image is uh, upside down and that's fine. Let's just, <laughs> God damn it. Rotate, um, rotate 3D, take that mesh. Um, Angle of rotation is 180. Angle degrees set to degrees. Yeah. Center of rotation should be, I believe we, we are using a box that's 100 by 100 by 100. So center of rotation, if we do 50 by 50 by, by 50, um, that should do the trick. That is not that. There we go. And then axis should be X. That is not X. Or Y, doesn't matter. Oh man. <laughs> okay, so now we're good. I just rotated it uh, around. You can do that in Rhino as well later on. Okay. Whew. Okay. So now um, there are a few more things that I want to show you and then we'll end the tutorial uh, here. So things to show. Uh, first of all, this is a little bit, even with resolution of 158, 156, it's, it's a little bit rough. And um, at this moment, it uh, takes half a second to calculate, half a second here. So that's a second. Yeah, a second to calculate. So let's go for, actually, let's leave it at 156 and let's just see if we can smooth it out, right? The nice thing about voxels is that you can use techniques that you would use in Photoshop, for instance, right? So here, all of the uh, pixels are sharp, right? But if I go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, right? And I specify a Gaussian blur radius, all of the pixels become, you know, smoother. That is the nice thing about voxels. Because here I can go to, to, to filters, Gaussian blur filter, right? Which will ask me for voxels. Uh, so I have voxels here, sure. It will ask me for where do we put this? I will just put it here. It will ask me for a channel that I want to blur, right? So that's going to be my shape channel. And it's going to ask me for a radius of blurring. So by default, the radius is 0 0.03. Let's just see what happens when I, instead of using raw voxels, I will use the blurred ones for constructing the ISO mesh. Hello? Just disappears. Invalid mesh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, combine and clean. Let's just see if that helps. Absolutely doesn't, okay, 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 okay. What if we make it smaller? Ah, okay. So here, 
radius of 0 0.03 is way too large. You can see it's, you know, the, 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 it does blur everything out and everything is smooth, but it's way too much. So let's try 0 0.01 for the radius. All right, all right, all right. That's that's not that bad. It's starting to get a little bit jaggy, but I can live with it. Uh, what if we have 0 0.005, like half of that? Okay, so the more you blur things, the, the, the more you lose in, in re like resolution-wise, of course. All right, so let's say 0 0.99 again. Yeah, we're losing quite a bit here when we are using 0 0.05. Let's do even less radius. Uh, but then we're... <sighs> so it's always a trade-off, right, with, with uh, blurring. It's how, how much information do you, do you want to keep? Um, let's try this and then 0 0.003. No, that's not that bad. So there's always, like, with, with this, it's always a balance. Okay, and now let's try 256. Hello, 256. This is gonna take a, a little bit of time to, to calculate. Let's just wait. There we go. So this is high resolution. Well, not, not high. Because from, from looking at these images, I believe these images are... Let me see, properties, details, 512, 512 by 512. So that's the highest uh, resolution I can go for. With higher voxel um, resolution than that, it won't make a difference. Right, so 512 is, is the highest one. But this is what I have. And I like it. Okay, so now let's do something cool with it. Uh, this is the end of the tutorial. Um, so hopefully you've learned something something new. And again, I will be making quite, a, like a, I guess a few more videos uh, about this. You know, so I'll, I'll, I'll talk about those, um, those, those material ratio channels and all of that, don't worry in later videos, but this is just something to get you hooked on, <laughs> so to say. Um, let's go for 0 0.5. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, maybe we can smooth this out a bit more. 0 0.01. Mm -hmm. That's that's nice. I hate that Grasshopper keeps minimizing when I when it does these kind of really heavy calculations. Bake that to default layer, and now let's do ISO value of 0 0.01. That's good. Oh, so that was uh, the, the back, huh? And bake this one out to the fault layer. Okay, so we have that done. Um, I will be saving this document and I will be uploading it to my Patreon page. So for, for everyone, um, um, like every patron uh, will be able to download this particular file. I'll also upload the set of images that I used. So that's going to be tutorial 31. Um, yeah, sure. Tutorial 31. Save. Okay, so that's done. Uh, let me close this bad boy. So we have this going on. Um, it's a little bit weird. Let's... Oh, and a little bit heavy. Unify mesh normals. Okay. Let's flip this bad boy around. Okay. So there's a hole there. Uh, we 
we don't care. Um, let me split this joint mesh. Hello? Why can't I split this? Ah, th th that doesn't matter. This is just for, for the uh, thumbnail. Okay, so if I go to Arctic view, this is how it looks like right now, but I can add uh, texture mapping. No, I can add a material to it and I'll just add um, new material, which is going to be plastic, plastic fantastic. Uh, transparency of it is going to be kind of transparent. So we have that going on and let's say the color of it is going to be tan. So we have that going on. Okay. And then I will take the, let me lock this mesh and take the second one, create a new material, also plastic. And let's make it red. And let's make it also kind of transparent. Ooh, um, forgot that it does that. This is what I came up with. Um, well, not this, it's actually, where is it? This, right, this render right here, and it's just an emissive map together with some uh, transparent um, red material. Nothing fancy, with some a little bit of fog, but it kind of looks nice in the, What's the name of the viewport, right? Um, let's see if we can do a turntable. Yeah, we can. And as it's, as it's going, I can I can talk a little bit. So this is very good. My microphone is way too far. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, this is very, very good for uh, medical um, design, you know, for, for design for uh, bone braces, braces, is that the word? Uh, I don't know. Um, and, and stuff like that. And maybe we will, once we're done with the voxel, not maybe, once we are done with these voxel tutorials, I will come back to, uh, to this and design something for a rib cage or something like that. I don't, I'm still not sure what, but uh, we'll figure it out, All right? So for now, this is just a quick glimpse, a quick example of what can be achieved with voxels, right? And uh, I believe, you know, all of you will see the potential here. And we will take a look, uh, take a deeper dive into it in the next videos. So again, all of the files are going to be available for my Patreon supporters, which you can uh, become in the link in the video description below. And what else? That's it. All right, we're done. Hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you in a few days. Later.